Welcome to this new how-to. In previous videos, we already looked at what air ACs are and also how you can use SimBrief to plan your flights. SimBrief, right, free tool, but keep in mind that if you want to use the latest air AC, you would need a subscription. Today, we're gonna look at Little Nav Map, which was also a tool which we discussed in the air AC video. If you don't know what air AC is, then look at the top of this video because there's a banner where you can click on to show that video. Right, so make sure that you understand uh, how that works. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at the features and functionalities which are available in a little nav map, which will help you to plan your flight. Uh, and the first thing, of course, we're going to do is, okay, hey, where can you get the tool from? Well, if you go to littlenavmap.org, you will come to this website. And that's where you can download the latest version, which is 3.0.9, which has been released on the 31st of July. You can see that sometimes it takes a while before there's a new version, but on an occasional basis, expect a new version every, I would say, several months. The stable versions is the section where you can download the version. And as you can see, the Windows 64 bit, what installer is suitable for Microsoft Flight Simulator? Uh, the other ones could be used, but then you will need to perform some tricks by moving some databases because what the tool does is initially it will create a database with all the would say uh, navigation beacons, airports, etc. And if you move the database to a different OS, it likely will work. In the little nav map links, there is the user manual as well as the screenshots. There are links to uh, open support requests. Keep in mind it's open source, so don't have don't have would say certain SLA expectations. It remains uh, open source. They've got the frequently asked questions. If you have an issue, then I definitely would recommend you to first look at this section. Then you've got the Navi updates, which uh, allow you to update to the latest RAC cycle. But I will show you another way in a few seconds where you can simply use the Flight Simulator installer, which is always between records the latest RAC. Uh, the download, the, airport, uh, the aircraft profiles, we will look at this one a little bit later. And then some other links to other useful tools and helpful tools, uh, which can be used uh, or which were used to create a little nav map. Uh, everything is stored on GitHub, right? So if you click on this link, you will go to the GitHub where you can get the tool. So I already installed it because it did save some time, right? And this is how the tool looks. So if we would look at the top, we would see the menu with multiple options. We can see the file option, which contains the option to uh, create a new flight plan. You can add some other data, right? For example, you can uh, open a flight plan from SimBrief. So you could create a, a plan in SimBrief and then load it into this tool. Uh, you've got some uh, GPS exchange formats, which you can do. You can export uh, the flight plan. Some other export options, right? Specifically to see, okay, hey, uh, export waypoints for approaches, for example, or for SIDs or for stars or for airways, uh, right? So SIDs used for uh, departures, standard instrumental departure and star standard terminal approach routes to use uh, or arrival routes sorry to use for your arrivals and then we've got the approaches which contain the approach route and the airway simply are i would say multiple waypoints connected to one uh, label which is the airway which makes it easier to program it into your uh, aircraft then also you can add some google earth data that's something we're not going to look at because the most important things which we're going to do is we're going to plan a flight uh, using this tool. And that's why we need this menu for. Uh, other things you can do is simply uh, get some information. So for example, if I want to search for a specific airport, I can press search and then F4, and then I'm able to uh, search for a specific airport or F5 if I want to search for a specific nav aid, or if I want to search for a procedure, shift plus the F5 key. Uh, user point search that's where you can do uh, if you, you can create user points on the map and then you can search through them map as the name already says you can say define multiple things in the map uh, but more interesting are the views because inside the views you can say okay hey what kind of airports do i want to see do i want to see all the airports or do i only want to see them with i'll say for example a hard surface or do i only want to see heliports same thing is applicable to the navigates. You can see that we you can define the multiple uh, 
stations, which you will see. So you can see waypoints and the bees and VORs by default. Uh, the ILS feathers and the holdings are switched off by default. Uh, I would say you can use them, of course, uh, but it's really up to you. As well as these uh, low and high airways, which can be activated. I'm showing it in this menu, but as you can see, there are also some icons here above the map where you can switch on those options. Uh, so that's also uh, I'd say an option for you to do. Airspaces, you can activate the airspaces, right? The, uh, let's say the air, uh, let's say the airspace is divided in airspaces. Some of them are allowed to fly. Some of them you re would uh, require specific clearance for that to fly. Uh, likely will be a future video uh, on this. Then I've got the user points where you can define the user points. And then these are the views, right? So simply the fly plan is the section over here. Then we've got the alternate airports, uh, top of climbs. And you can see that you can define multiple options here. I would say use the options which you like to use. Uh, there is, I would say, a lot of things, right, uh, which you could define. Uh, but be careful because it could slow down the uh, tool itself a bit. Then we've got the weather. Uh, the weather, uh, you can either select uh, NOAA, manual, or flight simulator, explain only. Uh, and uh, I'd say by default, it's set to flight simulator, as you can see. Uh, so that's something you can do. Uh, but again, it really depends on what you prefer. User points, as mentioned, you can define the user points as well as clear them. The logbook, do the search logbook. And these are the aircraft performance files, right? Remember that we discussed in SimBrief how to define the air, uh, aircraft profile and why it is important, mainly for, I would say, fuel planning. Then this, I would say, is a comparable functionality where you can load a configuration file and then based on that, see how or predict the fuel usage. Scenery, this one is important. It needs to be set to Flight Simulator uh, in this case. And then you can see that you also have the RAC cycle. But I would recommend to use the uh, flight simulator version. Uh, and you can define that over here, right? So you can either say Navigraph or flight simulator. Uh, but it really depends on, uh, say, what you have. Because if you don't have the RAC cycle, you need to use a flight simulator. Because else it's using a pretty old RAC cycle. Which, would say, could, say, not work when loading the flight plan in flight simulator. They've got certain tools uh, which allow you to create a directory structure for saving files, for example, for saving files like the flight plan or the uh, performance files. And then you have also some other uh, options like you can open a configuration file, you can show the databases because as I mentioned, during the first start of the tool, it will create a database to store all these configuration settings as well as all those navigation uh, beacons, etc. Then we've got the window, which allow you to set up, of course, the multiple different views. Again, really depends on what you prefer to do. So enough talk. Uh, let's make sure that you set up the scenery library correct. As you can see, in my case, I already selected Flight Simulator. Uh, and what you can do is uh, you can sit, set this one to Simulator or to Navigraph, depending on what you do, right? So I'm sending it to Simulator also. Uh, and one of the cool things is that uh, if you, for example, install a new world update or hey, there's a new RAC update, then you likely want to reload this data into a little nav map. And to do that, you either press the control keys, the shift key and L from Lima, or you press this option over here and that will show you this window. And this window shows you the latest update, right? Of the mine was on uh, five minutes after 10 uh, on the 8th of August. And these were the number of files being indexed. These are the number of waypoints, VRs, ILS, NDBs, markers, waypoints, and airspaces. And you can see that it automatically said, okay, hey, this is for flight simulator, right? And this is the flight simulator base path, right? So those are where the uh, files are located. Uh, so in my case, it's in the MSFS folder. And then uh, when you press uh, load, it will start loading all the files, reading all the files, and then adding them to the database. I'm not going to do it for now because it will take some time, uh, roughly between five and 10 minutes, I do think. Uh, but I would say for now, it's not necessary because it's already updated. So enough talk about the uh, loading the uh, information, right? 
once you've loaded the information you can see that let's say the map looks pretty interesting because in this case right it's luxembourg uh, airport you can see that uh, here are some beacons you can see there's some more information uh, specifically about the airport itself uh, some of the information is shown in this section right so directly at the airport but as you briefly saw already there's also a pane where you can see some more detailed information so in this case you can see also the uh, parking spots you can see the uh, runway numbers um, and also some other things uh, which are really cool because you can also see the outer route right so the outer route the draft for example now if we go to the uh, right or left side of the window and go to the information pane you can select the airport if you select the airport you can see all the text over here you can see the facilities on the airport the, the runway type uh, the NOAA station right which shows you okay hey uh, what's uh, the preferred runway and what's the uh, weather today the longest runway and also frequencies the number of gates the number of uh, general aviation ramps and some other things like okay hey where did it get the data from in this case the one store folder which is the official folder from flight simulator uh, then it also got some data from uh, navigraph because i've got the navigraph subscription uh, which will make it easier to see okay hey this is where it got the data from uh, so make sure that this is accurate so that's uh let's say one thing which you can do the other thing which you can do is you can uh say go to runways which will show you the individual runway information right so runway 24 and these are the ILS categories category 3 uh, glide scope a DME right distance measure or distance measure equipment is available uh localizer heading the glider scope uh or the glide scope sorry three degrees and the magnetic uh, deglation as well as the frequency and the same thing for uh in this case runway number six uh you see that this one is a cat one while uh runway 24 is cat three and some other information like the, the poppy lights or the vasi type uh in this case poppy four that's really nice com as the name already says right contains the communication information such as the approach control the eight is the clearance and the tower of course so if you want to make yourself let's say it even harder you could let's say uh, change the radio frequencies manually in flight simulator uh, if you're communicating to the atc and then we're at the procedures where we'll find the approaches which are available the transitions which are available and the type of transition and you can see that this is uh, let's say again per runway you can see the transitions as well as the approaches which are available uh, so nice information i would say then we also have nearest because keep in mind that in some cases you want to define an alternate airport right an alternate airport is an airport which you can fly to in case the airport which you initially uh, had in mind is for example closed and that's where you can use this one for right so the new airport or nearest airports with procedures you can see that these airports are i would say close right and close really means to say within 60 uh, nautical miles so you can simply click on them uh, and then you will go to them right so i now selected the uh, buco uh, airbase and then you can see uh, this one over here so pretty nice then also to make life easier you've got the uh nearest radio navates right so for frequency or for planning you could use those uh, which will make life a little bit easier if you want but again this really depends if you want to use them so let's go back to luxembourg in this case so here's the airport right so that's nice then of course we've got the weather right here's a little bit more detail about the weather so the sunrise and sunset the transition altitude as well as the flight rules which are applicable in this case vfr is also possible the temperature the pressure um, the clouds and the best runway for wind is runway 24 in this case a uh, headwind eight knots uh, crosswind three knots so a lot of information about the runway so this is only for the runway right because if i would select for example something else like an f8 in this case an ndb channel then i can see also that information as well as the data source from that information so if i would select this one which is uh, a 4 dme then i will get some more information so depending on the uh, beacon available you will get some more information or plus information 
airspaces, if you select specific airspaces, uh, user points, if you define them, and you can see that there's one which is stored in the uh, wing 42 bone set 247D uh, documentation. So that's one uh, which I fly to fly with, I would say occasionally. That one has some specific uh, tokens defined. You can have the logbook, the online clients in case you're flying online and the online centers, which you won't see much in my case. So that's the okay, explanation of where you can find the information uh, in uh, the tool. But now going to the real work, right? Because we said, okay, hey, we want to plan a flight. So what you can do first is say, make sure that you're starting clean. If you press uh, file, then you can select new flight plan. Uh, that will simply uh, do everything from scratch, or you can say reset all for a new flight. That also reset everything. Uh, then it will say, okay, hey, uh, I'm gonna create an empty flight plan. I'm gonna delete the user aircraft trail. Uh, trail. Reset the active flight plan, uh, restart the uh, aircraft performance collection, and restart the flight detection in the logbook. And then optionally, you can also define these. So if you now press OK, then you're good to go. Is it 100% necessary? Not really, but hey, I always try to say start from clean. The other option again is new flight. Now, the first thing we're going to do is load an aircraft performance file. So I'm going to zoom out and then I'm going to show you where to get them. So if you look at the bottom of the downloads or the little nav map uh, links, you will find the downloads option, which will open this website. And this website contains profiles for aircrafts. And these are the performance profiles. You can see the Airbus 390, the A3X from Fly by Wire. You can see the Beechcraft uh, uh, A350i from Asobo and multiple other ones. Uh, you can sometimes see also two. Uh, and then you can simply download them, right? So uh once you've downloaded them you of course need to load them so that's the second step so for that you go back to a little nav map and then i will zoom in again and you go to aircraft and select open performance file so if the directory structure has been created you will find it in documents and then little nav map files or in my case bestanda because it's dutch and in that uh, directory you will find the airport performance files right so Let's assume that we want to fly with the Beechcraft King Air A350i from Asobo. Then we select it. And then based on that, it has automatically loaded that information inside the flight plan. You can see that it directly jumps to the fuel report, but it says, hey, I don't have any flight plan attached to it. Right? That's correct because we didn't define any flight plan. Uh, but this is how you load the performance files for the flight. Now, before you start planning the flight, you can ask yourself a few things. First of all, okay, what's the flight plan cruise altitude? And what's the type of flight, right? Do I want to fly IFR or VFR? So you can see there's a little bit more flexibility in this tool, uh, which allows you to do a lot of nice things. Uh, so let's assume, again, assume that our uh, flight level is 5,000 feet. We're gonna fly uh, IFR, that's fine. And then we're gonna select uh, the departure menu. So what we can do now is we can right click on a airport symbol on the map and select it as a departure destination. Or you can use the airport search to select the departure destination. So if I uh, press F4, like I need to zoom out a bit. So if I press uh, F4, then you will see that we're going to a different section. And that's the section to the right side. On the right side, you can search. You can search for airports, navigate procedures, user points, right? The ones which we already discussed. And then you can define, okay, what are the criteria? So at the minimum, a runway length, the maximum runway length. And then you can also see that you can define the uh, surface. So for example, if you fly with an aircraft which can land on the water and you only want to use those, then you can simply say, okay, hey, all water. Or if you want to exclude it, uh, you can say any is water. Um, I, at least I do think that that's the case. Or you can select no runway. So multiple options. And based on that, it will uh, find some information. As you can see, there's also some other options. For example, you can search for uh, an airport in specific, I would say range, right? So from no, uh, zero uh, nautical miles up to 100 nautical miles and any direction. And you can see that it's a very long list. Uh, 
you can also push in the name here for example if we want to depart from uh what was it luxembourg right that's the one we uh we want to fly from so we are here it's this one has as i cow code uh, echo lima lima x-ray and if we would press that then we could see the information here so this is the ident uh the information which is available right and you can select it and then it will be added to the flight plan uh, another option is to simply search for the name uh, luxembourg right luxembourg it will also find the information so that's the first option you can do but in our case we already know the airport which we're going to depart from and uh, so we're going to select it and then right click on it and then you can see that we say okay hey i can show the airport information but that, that's not necessary because we already selected it you can set the airport uh luxembourg as departure or as destination and you can select uh runway and use uh luxembourg as departure so the difference is if you would do this you can see now a yellow marker on it and if we go to the flight plan it has added in this case uh, the airport and we can click it uh, and if we click it you can say okay hey i want to again have more information select the departure select the destination so pro show procedures right if we do that well we already know what's going to happen right it will uh, show you the procedures which are available and those are the procedures in the search menu so in this case we can see the sids we can see the stars and then also the first and the last waypoint for you uh, to use in this case it's set to all procedures but we're going to depart from the airport so we're going to say okay departure sid then you can select the runway so let's assume runway 24 and then you can see the different let's say uh procedures if you expand them you can see the steps which are included in those procedures uh if you select it uh then it will show a preview right it won't add it to the flight plan yet so that's good uh because uh, if it would do that, then it would, I would say, create a mess. So you can easily, I would say, navigate to this to see, okay, which one is the most suitable for you uh, to fly. You can see that there. So it's a nice things. Even, I would say, altitude restrictions are also there. So really cool. You can see that there are multiple ones available. So we're going to go for uh, the first one, which is uh, this one. So we're going to fly to the uh lord uh if we want to use this one we can say press and then we can say insert sid 24 dik 3x into the flight plan and if we do that you will see that the color changes and you can see that it has added all this information over here now if you say okay hey this is the wrong one i don't want to use it then you can simply select this and press the delete key then it will delete it same thing is applicable for the airport you can also do that so in this case i'm going to say alt shift r and that will show me a different menu because this menu is also has the options so you can simply say okay hey i want to select the departure runway in this case runway three and then if you press ok what it will do is it will only add the runway right it doesn't add any procedure uh but i would say uh it only adds runway as mentioned uh and then you can I would say do the i would say it adds the departure lag right so if we zoom into that bit you can see that it added the departure lag which is simply a straight line uh say out of the uh out of the runway in this case it's flight position flight plan position three which means it's this position right so again i'm not going to use this because i like the procedure and if you see if you select the uh, entry above everything below will be deleted if you press the delete key so watch out with that so again we're going to go to this one right click on it and we're going to say insert as id and then it has added the information for flight plan you can see also that it found some problems because if your flight plan is incorrect then you will have the options to uh, look at the errors right so in this case hey what are the issues it uh, the flight plan is too short right uh, or or the cruise altitude is too high and climb a decent air sp uh, speeds in the air aircraft performance uh, files are too low departure or de destination airports elevation is above the cruise altitude and the cruise altitude violates one or more procedure altitude restrictions so likely we need to change some things all right so let's change this to uh, 15,000 uh, feet 
and and see uh right so still still not still not resolved still some issues uh but that's that's for now so based on this we can continue our flight plan right we can continue building our flight plan so we first likely need to figure out okay hey what's the plan right where we're we gonna fly to currently we're in luxembourg so let's assume that we're gonna fly to somewhere in germany uh so let's say uh what will be short flight let's say to cologne and then we're gonna right click it and then we're gonna say uh, set airport cologne bonn eddk as destination so if you do that you can see that it directly draws a straight line uh it added uh the uh, or it didn't do any waypoint in between because the uh decree the was the latest one uh, which was added to our flight plan. Uh, so you still have the capability of doing that, right? You can still add some uh, waypoints. So for example, if you want to do uh, a diversion, right? So or if you want to, for example, uh, look at this one. So this is uh, Echo Delta Romeo Victor. You press it, it will get the latest information. In this case, it's uh, an airport. So you might not want to select that. But if you zoom in a bit, you can see, okay, hey, is there anything in the neighborhood which we could use? In this case, you can, for example, select the uh, Oglor or any other one. Again, if you select the uh, navigation aid, uh, likely it will show some information. Not it, For me, it didn't work with all because you need to make sure you're right-clicking or clicking on it correctly. So this is the RNAV waypoint Oglor. I can, uh, say, zoom in or out the map. If you want to do that but what if you don't want to see those waypoints right what if you only want to see if you are stations for ndbs well you can simply enable or disable the options by selecting this uh, which will make it uh, your life easier uh, so that that's really nice so zooming into the map again a bit uh, do we want to add something else i'm looking if we want to do something else uh, let's see let's go back to where we left so this is deek right that's the latest one so let's assume that we only want to see vors is there something close or do we want to fly for example via this one the spremont one well let's do that so again right click uh, we can say add uh, four dme spree points to the flight plan or you can append it uh, so if i click add it will simply add it so now we're flying like this. Here you can also see now that the top of climb and the top of descent are there. So likely all our errors are gone now. And yes, we're correct. All the errors are gone now. So we've got the uh, direction in which we need to fly. We've got the top of climb, the top of descent uh, over here. And we also have, of course, uh, Cologne, which is the destination airport. Now, if we want to select, for example, procedure, because we want to approach, uh, uh, say, uh bon or cologne in a nice way uh we can go to the uh, airport information and then we're gonna look at okay hey what's the uh recommended uh one way which we uh, want to select right so we're gonna select one ways again right because it's a cross one so this will be challenging uh there's no helipad right stop positions runway 7 or runway 25 what's the weather uh, weather is also pretty okay so if in case you don't want to know uh, or you don't want to select the preferred runway, you can do that. But as you can see here, they are recommending us runway 25, right? So let's do that. So we're going to, again, right click on Bonn and then say, okay, hey, this is the correct one, but we want to select the destination runway. It will pop up this one again. And this is weird because now it has more runways. So I'm wondering if we selected the correct one. Uh, so let's go to the uh, go to the airport view again. No, that's the issue. We didn't select the correct one. So zoom out and then select uh, Bonn. Show airport information. Yeah, this is better, right? Why does it show airport information? Or press as you just saw. Press the control and the E from India, and then you will find the information. Uh, watch out with scrolling with the mouse button uh, because I also did it, and then it will move down the list. 
So in our case, right, if we look at the weather and then zoom down, we can see that uh, runway 32R or Lima are the best ones to select. So we can uh, go to uh, this one. So which means that if we uh, look at the information down here, we can see the information, right? We can see some more information about the specific runways if we want. Now, if we want to add the destination runway, we can uh, select it from here, right? Which will bring up this window and then say, okay, hey, we want to land on, well, let's assume that we want to use ILS also. In this case, we want to use our 32R, right? And altitude above the uh, runway at start level at 1,000 feet, offset angle relative to the runway uh, zero and the start of the final runway threshold uh, three. So we're starting with the uh, final at three nautical miles from the airport uh, which could be an option right so the approach slope is 3.1 uh, degrees which, which could be okay uh, again if you want to select a specific arrival or approach route you can also do that but now for now let's hit okay so once we've done that you can see that uh, the approach will be added here right it will tell us the uh, restrictions which are applicable uh, both the feet not an angle uh, and also some more information. If we scroll to the right, we can see the distance, the remaining, but also the ETAs. And you can see that the few uh, remaining in LBS or in GAL, right? That's due to the performance file, which will make it easier. And you can also see that it pulls the uh, weather information. See, okay, hey, what kind of wind is there, right? So that's also pretty interesting information. So this, I would say, is kind of a default flight, right? Which we now planned. If we would zoom out, you can see that we're flying directly to this one. But let's assume that we want to do an approach. Uh, we can still do that. So to do that, what we can do is we can go to, uh, in this case, uh, the all procedures. Uh, we can go to the airport and then search for the airport. If we know the airport, right? Echo Delta, Delta Kilo. So we can push it in here. And of course, there are other options. I'm aware of that. You can double click on it and then we can say, okay, hey, uh, show the arrival and departure uh, procedures. In this case, we want to uh, arrive at the airport, right? So we're going to say uh, star, for example. And then, of course, we need to select the runway, which was 32R, if I'm correct. Let's go to the, yeah. Are. and then again it's the same on say trick as we did with the uh, SID right you can select the ones which you want to look at to see which one is the most suitable for you uh, so if you are say if more familiar at the airport it makes it easier because then you can directly select the correct one as you can see I'm not familiar with this one so I need to click everything to figure out what's the correct one uh, so in my case, I do think that this one would make most sense, right? Because then we're slightly deferring to this one and then uh, flying back. So we can look at the details again, which contain the information, and then simply say right-click and then say insert star 32R and VO32 into the flight plan. Oh, and then it has added all the information again in the correct way. As you just saw, there's also an option to show all the uh, procedures. So you can simply say, preview all the procedures, and then that's a more, I would say, sim brief uh, view where it shows you all the uh, views. So I just went one by one, but if you want to do it this way, of course, you're more than, I would say, uh, more than welcome to do that. Uh, don't forget to switch off this option because else you might get, I would say, a little bit frustrated about that and maybe a little bit, uh, say, uh, <laughs> Probably you're getting confused. That's probably the best wording. As you can see, the altitude restrictions as well as the speed restrictions are there per, per beacon, right? So that's really nice. And then you've got your flight plan. So flight plan remarks, those are just for you. So you can plan it. Here's the information. So it says MSFS Navigraph Cycle 1801, which could be dangerous, right? Uh, because we don't want to use the specific uh, AR RAC cycle. Then this is the few, uh, let's say prediction, right? The performance file, which we loaded. So this is the few plan, right? Where it shows you the trip view, the usable view, 
uh, which you need. So 15% of usable fuel. And then also, let's say, some more information about the climate decent rates, uh, how much time is required to climb, and then the uh, decent rule of thumb for uh, decent rule of thumb, right? So for the descending path. So current performance. And this is really if you connect it using the connect tool, which is available, right? So if I would start Flight Simulator, you would see some more information over here. So that still is an option to do. And that's also why you see, okay, hey, uh, in this case, aircraft performance. In this case, it says, okay, uh, C172. So likely I need to uh, make sure that I um, selected the correct one. Oh, I already did that, right? So make sure why it still shows that. Uh, so it should be good normally if I'm uh, correct, right? Um, this is what we've done now, right? So we kind of set up the uh, flight plan. We defined the uh, performance file just for performance calculations. Uh, but one thing I didn't show you yet is uh, at the bottom. Because at the bottom, you can see the flight plan elevation profile. And here you can see, okay, hey, what's the elevation during the flight? And then also the direction which you need to fly to. And then, of course, also the uh, descending uh, part, which say is a nice feature, I would say. Uh, you can increase the size, right, by uh, clicking on this button. Then it will show it, it will be a little bit bigger. And as you can see, it says connecting to Microsoft Flight Simulator. So again, if you start it, you will see some more information being shown here. So that's definitely something which I uh, would recommend you to do. Uh, have a look at that because it looks pretty cool. With that, we're at the end of this video. And in this video, we looked at how to set up Little Nav Map, right? Loading the uh, RSC information. Then starting from scratch with loading a performance file, setting up the flight. Uh, this was all done manually. Uh, of course, you need to not understand, okay, hey, where do I want to fly to? And uh, are there any other things, right? So destination airport, do I want to set up an alternate airport, for example? And that's something, the last thing which we I didn't show yet, but it's as easy as selecting an airport from the list of, let's say, uh, airports which are cl pretty close to you, right? Using the nearest option. Uh, and then I would say, uh, right click on it and then simply say, or click on it. And then you can define them as an alternate airport, right? So by doing it like uh, this, right? That's the only thing you need to do. Uh, so now it has been set up as alternate airport, the uh, Northernic air base so again here is this video where i showed you a late, latest trick uh in during the end of this video again i hope you liked it right i think i discussed pretty much all the details which you need to understand to use a little nav map to plan your flights uh of course if you don't know how to start with uh, a flight right you don't know uh for example where you want to fly from or where you want to fly to then there's a nice option in little nav map i'll let me show that and that's the uh, option to generate a random flight um, that's over here you can say okay generate random flight which will make it out a nice for you again with that we're at the end of this video again i hope you liked it if you liked it then don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe my to my channel hit the bell signal to see make sure that you're receiving a, a notification if you want to Get a notification if I post a new video. And if you got questions or comments, then of course feel free to post them in the comment box below. Happy flying and until next time.